the next natural hazardous earthquake earthquakes are caused by the movement of tectonic plates which results in the shaking of the ground earthquakes can result in tsunamis landslides and liquefaction making them highly destructive to mitigate the impact of earthquakes in building codes must be in place to ensure that buildings are earthquake resistant Governments must also create evacuation plans and conduct earthquake drills to educate people on what to do during an earthquake. Then volcanic eruptions are another natural hazard that poses a significant threat to people and the environment. Volcanic eruptions can result in pyroclastic flaws, ash falls, lava flows and volcanic gases. Governments must ensure that people living near active volcanoes are adequately informed of the potential hazards and are prepared to evacuate in case of an eruption. Scientists can also monitor volcanoes, volcanoes and detect signs of an impending eruption, allowing authorities to issue a timely warning and conduct evacuations. Hurricanes are another, are another natural hazard that can cause significant damage. They can result in high-speed winds, storm surges and flooding, leading to loss of lives and property damage to mitigate the impact of hurricanes building codes must be in place to ensure that buildings are hurricane resistant governments must also conduct hurricane drills to educate people on what to do during a hurricane and establish evacuation plans floods are one of the most common natural hazards that occur due to excessive windfall storm surges or dam failures floods can result in loss of lives damage to infrastructure and contamination of water sources to mitigate the impact of floods governments must develop flood plan maps to identify areas that are prone to flooding building codes must be in place to ensure that buildings are flood resistant governments must also ensure that draining systems are well maintained to prevent flooding Wildfires are another natural hazard that can cause significant damage to the environment and property. Wildfires can occur due to lightning strike, human activities or natural causes. To mitigate the impact of wildfires, governments must conduct the drills to educate people to what to do during a wildfire. Governments must also develop wildfire management plans to prevent wildfires from spreading and to manage them effectively. Landslides can occur due to natural processes such as heavy rainfall or earthquakes. or human activities such as mining or deforestation landslides can result in loss of lives and property damage to mitigate the impact of landslides governments must ensure that people live in landslides prone areas are informed to the potential hazards and are prepared to evacuate in case of a landslide governments must also regulate human activities in landslide prone areas to prevent landscapes from occurring droughts are another natural hazard that can result in crop failure water shortages and famine droughts can occur due to lack of rainfall or human activities such as deforestation or excessive groundwater pumping governments must also regulate human activities in landslide prone areas to prevent landslides from occurring droughts are another natural hazard that can result in crop failure water shortage and famine droughts can occur due to lack of rainfall or human activities such as deforestation or excessive groundwater pumping to mitigate the impact of droughts governments must develop water conservation strategies to ensure that water is used efficiently governments must also establish early warning systems to detect signs of drought and provide timely assistance to affected communities in conclusion natural hazards are an avoidable phenomena that pose a significant threat to human life infrastructure and the environment It is crucial to understand these hazards and develop mitigation strategies to reduce their impact. Mitigation strategies include building at at quick resistant buildings, conducting evacuation drills, developing flood plan maps, regulating human activities, etc. Next, education higher education system, governance, governance for policy and administration in India. India is one of the largest higher education systems in the world with over 1000 universities and more than 40000 colleges the higher education system in india is governed by various bodies and agencies at the national state and institutional levels in this essay we will discuss the governance policy and administration of the higher education system in india
Governance of Higher Education System in India The governance of higher education system in India is shared by several bodies and agencies including the Ministry of Education, University Grants Commission, All India Council of for Technical Education, AICTE, National Assessment and Accreditation Council, NAC, and the National Council for Teacher Education, NCTE. These bodies are responsible for formulating policies, providing funding, ensuring quality, and regulating and fa the functioning of higher education institutions in India. NCTE, National Council for Teacher Education. Polity of higher education system in India. The polity of the higher education system in India is categorized by a federal structure where the central government and the state governments share the responsibility for higher education. The central government is responsible for providing funding, formulating policies and regulating institutions of national importance such as the Indian Institute of Technology and the Indian Institute of Management, IIT and IAM. The state governments are responsible for funding and regulating institutions within their respective states. Administration of higher education system in India. The administration of the higher education system in India is carried out by various bodies at the institutional level. This include the governing bodies of universities and colleges such as the Executive Council, Academic Council and Finance Committee. The Vice Chancellor is the Chief Executive of the University and is responsible for the overall administration of the institution. The Registrar is responsible for the academic and administrative activities of the University. Challenges faced by higher education system in India. The higher education system in India faces several challenges including low enrollment rates, lack of quality, insufficient funding and poor infrastructure. There is a significant gap between demand for higher education and availability of quality institutions. The quality of higher education in India is often criticized for being outdated and not meeting the needs of the industry. The lack of adequate funding has led to the shortage of qualified facility inadequate research facilities and poor infrastructure way forward to address these challenges the government has launched several initiatives to improve the quality and accessibility of higher education in india the the rusa and the national education policy 2020 are some of the key initiatives aimed at reforming the higher education system in india these initiatives focus on increasing the enrollment rate improving the quality of education and providing funding for research and infrastructure development. In conclusion, the governance, polity and administration of the higher education system in India are complex and multi-layered. While the system faces several challenges, the government's initiative provides hope for a better future. With concerned efforts from all stakeholders, it is possible to transform India's higher education system to a world-class system that can meet the needs of the 20th, 25th one century. Structure of the institutions for higher learning and research in India. In India, the higher education system is divided into various types of institutions including universities, colleges and research institutions. These institutions are responsible for providing education and conducting research in various fields. The structure of these institutions are complex and diverse and their governance, polity and administration vary based on the type or level. In this essay, we will discuss the structure of the institutions for further learning and research in India in detail. So universities in India, universities are the highest level of higher education institutions. They are autonomous bodies that offer undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral degrees in various fields. The University Grants Commission or UGC is the regulatory body responsible for the coordination, determination and maintenance of standards of university education in India. The UGC recognizes both central and state universities. Central universities are established and funded by the central government, while state universities are established and funded by the state government. Colleges. Colleges are the institutions that provide undergraduate education in various fields. They are affiliated with universities and offer degrees in various fields like arts, science, commerce and professional courses like engineering, medicine, law, etc. In India, there are government-funded and private colleges. Government-funded colleges are affiliated with state universities, while private colleges are affiliated with either central or state universities. Then research institutions. In India, research institutions are institutions that are primarily focused on research activities. These institutions are either funded by the government or the private organizations. Research institutions in India are categorized into different types, such as Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR and Laboratories, Indian Council of Agricultural Research, ICAR institutions. 
then Indian Institutes for Technology IITs, Indian Institute of Management IAMs. Governance, Polity and Administration The Governance, Polity and Administration of Institutions for Higher Learning and Research in India are complex and vary based on their type and level. Universities in India are governed by the Vice Chancellor who is the Chief Executive Officer of the University. The Vice Chancellor is appointed by the President of India who acts on the advice of the UGC. The administration of the universities is carried out by various departments such as the Registrar's Office, Examination Branch, Finance and Accounts Department etc. Colleges in India are governed by the principal who is the chief executive officer of the college. The principal is appointed by the university to which the college is affiliated. The administration of colleges is carried out by various departments such as examination branch, finance and accounts departments etc. Research institutions in India are governed by their representative directors. The administration of research institutions is carried out by various departments such as administrative department, finance and accounts department. In conclusion, the structure of institutions for higher learning and research in India is complex and diverse. The institutions are categorized based on their type and level, such as universities, colleges and research institutions. The governance, policy and administration of these institutions vary based on their type and level. The institutions for higher learning and research in India play a crucial role in the development of the country by providing education and conducting research in various fields. Formal and distance education in India with advantages and disadvantages importance and how to overcome problems formal and distance education in india education is one of the most essential tools for an individual's growth and development it plays a significant role in shaping one's career and life education can be acquired through formal or informal means formal education is the type of education that is provided by an educational institution such as schools colleges and universities while informal education is acquired through non-formal means such as reading books attending seminars and workshops in this essay, we will be discussing formal and distance education in India, its advantages, disadvantages, importance and how to overcome problems. So formal education in India. Formal education in India is mainly provided by schools, colleges and universities. The educational system in India is divided into various levels such as primary, secondary, higher secondary, undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral levels. The formal education system in India Formal education in India. Formal education in India is more mainly provided by schools, colleges and universities. The educational system in India is divided into various levels like primary, secondary, higher secondary, undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral levels. The formal education system in India follows a set of rules and regulations which is governed by the Ministry of Education. Advantages of formal education in India. Structured learning. Formal education is structured in a way that it follows a set of guidelines and syllabus which ensures that students receive a comprehensive and well-rounded education. Certified qualifications. Formal education provides students with certified qualifications which can help them pursue further education or career opportunities. Then professional teachers. The formal education system in India employs professional and qualified teachers who can guide students and provide them the quality education. Access to resources. Formal education provides students with access to resources such as libraries, laboratories and other academic facilities which can aid their learning. Then disadvantages of formal education in India. High costs. Formal education can be expensive which can be a barrier for students from lower socio-economic backgrounds. Limited learning. Formal education can be restrictive and limit creativity and innovative thinking as students are required to follow a set curriculum. Pressure and stress. Formal education can create pressure and stress in, on students to perform well which can be detrimental to their mental and physical health. Distance education in India. Distance education in India is a mode of education that is divided and provided into students who are unable to attend traditional education institutions due to various reasons. Distance education in India is provided through open universities, correspondence courses and online courses. Advantages of distance education in India include flexible learning. Distance education provides students with the flexibility to study at their own pace and time which can be beneficial for students who are working or have other commitments. Then affordability. Distance education is more affordable than traditional education making it accessible to a wider range of students. Then access to technology. Distance education relies heavily on technology which provides students with access to resources and facilities that may not be available to traditional education institutions. <coughs> 
then disadvantages of distance education in india lack of interaction and distance education can lack interaction between students and teachers which can high hinder the learning experience dependence on technology distance education relies heavily on technology which can be a barrier for students who do not have access to reliable internet and computer systems and limited networking distance education can limit networking opportunities which can be important for students looking to build the professional connections then importance of formal and distance education in india formal and distance education in india play a vital role in providing quality education to students formal education provides students with a structured learning environment and certified qualifications which can help them pursue further education or career opportunities distance education provides students with the flexibility to study at their own pace and time which can be beneficial for students who are working to have other commitments both types of education are essential in providing students with access to quality education how to overcome problems in formal and distance education here are several challenges and problems associated with formal and distance education in india however with the right strategies and approach it is possible to overcome these problems and improve the quality of education here are some ways to overcome problems in formal and distance education in india infrastructure and from improvement one of the major problems faced by both formal and distance education is the lack of proper infrastructure schools and colleges need to have proper classrooms libraries laboratories and equipment to facilitate effective learning similarly distance education institutions need to provide students with access to study materials digital resources and online forums governments and educational institutions need to invest in invest in infrastructure infrastructure improvement to provide better learning facilities then technological advancement with the advent of technology there is a need for educational institutions to incorporate digital tools and resources into their curricula online learning management systems video lectures and interactive stimulations can make learning more engaging and accessible teachers and educators need to be trained to use technology effectively to enhance learning outcomes then quality facility quality of facility is a key factor in determining the success of educational institutions situations can make learning more engaging and accessible teachers and educators need to be trained to use technology effectively to enhance learning outcomes then quality facility quality of facility is a key factor in determining the success of educational institutions educational institutions need to recruit and retain quality facility faculty members who are knowledgeable and are experienced in their respective fields regular training and development programs should be provided to enhance their teaching skills and techniques pedagogical approach the pedagogical approach of format and distance education institution need to be student centric the focus should be on providing a learning experience that is interactive engaging and encourages critical thinking the use of multimedia and digital tools can help to facilitate this approach assessment and evaluation evaluation and assessment are crucial components of any educational system educational institutions need to have a fair and transparent assessment system that provides feedback to students and help them to improve distance education institution need to ensure that their assessment methods are reliable and valid then collaborative learning collaborative learning can be an effective way to overcome the challenges of distance education online forums discussion groups and virtual classrooms can facilitate collaborative learning and help students to learn from each other educational institutions need to promote collaborative learning as part of their pedagogical approach then support services support services such as counseling mentoring and tutoring can help students to overcome the challenges of formal and distance education educational institutions need to provide the services to ensure that students have the support they need to succeed in conclusion formal and distance education in india faces several challenges but with the right strategies and approach it is possible to overcome these problems and improve the quality of education by investing the in infrastructure technology facility pedagogical methods assessment collaborative learning and support services educational institutions can provide students with a quality education that prepares them for the future formal and distance education explanation with advantages and disadvantages and importance formal education refers to the traditional 
classroom based approach to learning where a student attends classes in a physical setting such as a school college or university this model of education is highly structured and organized with a fixed curriculum and regular assessments and a set of timetable on the other hand distance education refers to a mode of learning that allows students to study from remote locations using various digital techniques such as internet video conferencing or teleconferencing it provides greater flexibility to students who may not be able to attend traditional classrooms due to work or personal commitments then advantages of formal education structured and organized learning environment personal interaction with teachers and peers access to various resources and facilities like libraries laboratories etc then recognition and acceptance of degrees by employers and institutions then disadvantages of formal education such as curriculum and fixed schedules limited flexibility for students expensive tuition fees and other expenses requires students to be physically present in the classroom which may not be always feasible importance of formal education provides a solid foundation of knowledge and skills that are necessary for future success increase employability and career opportunities develop social and communication skills through interactions with peers and teachers promotes critical thinking and problem solving abilities then advantages of distance education flexibility to study at one's own pace and convenience access to education from remote locations lower tuition fees and expenses compared to traditional classrooms can balance work and personal commitments while studying disadvantages of distance education lack of personal interaction with teachers and peers requires self motivation and a discipline to complete the course work which is very important otherwise the process will just scatter and this end up having no use at all limited access to resources and facilities like laboratories and libraries a degree is may not be recognized or accepted by some employers or institutions importance of distance education provides this access to education for people who may not have the means to attend traditional classrooms offer greater flexibility flexibility for people who cannot attend classes due to work or personal commitments encourage self learning and self discipline increases digital literacy and technological skills to overcome the problems in formal and distance education some solutions include increasing funding for education to make it more affordable and accessible to all in improving the quality of education by hiring trained and qualified teachers developing curriculum that is relevant to the needs of the students and the job market providing better access to resources and facilities for students regardless of the mode of education they choose encouraging more collaboration and interaction between students and teachers even in a distance education professional technical and general education professional or technical education and general education are two different streams of education that serve different purposes in preparing individuals for their respective career paths professional or technical education professional or technical education is designed to provide students with specialized knowledge and skills required for specific professionals or trades it is a practical hands on approach to learning that focuses on preparing students for jobs in industries such as engineering healthcare technology and skilled trades some examples of professional or technical education include vocational schools technical institutes and apprenticeship vocational schools technical institutions and apprenticeship apprentice ships job readiness professional technical education focuses on developing practical skills and knowledge that are directly applicable to the particular industry or trade this helps students become job ready and gives them an advantage in the job market then career opportunities professional or technical education prepares students for specific jobs in high demand fields this means that students are more likely to find employment after completing their education hands on learning hands on learning professional technical education emphasize hands on learning which helps students develop practical skills and knowledge that are essential for their careers disadvantages limited scope professional or technical education focuses on a specific industry or trade this means that students may have limited job opportunities outside of their field of study lack of flexibility professional technical education is often structured and may not provide students with the flexibility to explore other areas of interest limited advancement professional or technical education is designed to prepare students for specific jobs which may limit their advancement opportunities then importance professional or technical education is important because it provides students with practical skills and knowledge that are essential for their careers 
it also helps to address the skill gap in the job market by preparing students for jobs in high demand fields then general education general education on the other hand is a broad based approach to education that focuses on developing well rounded individuals it provides students with a strong foundation in the humanities social science and advantages um courses in science and mathematics general education courses are often required as part of a degree program in colleges and universities advantages broad based knowledge general education provides students with a broad based knowledge of various subjects which helps them become well rounded individuals then transferable skills general education courses teach skills such as critical thinking communication and problem solving that are transferable to various fields then flexibility general education courses are often flexible and allow students to explore different areas of interest disadvantages include a lack of job readiness general education courses may not provide students with the practical skills and knowledge required for specific jobs lack of focus general education courses may lack focus and may not provide students with in-depth knowledge of specific subjects then cost general education courses can be expensive especially if they are not required as part of a degree program importance general education is important because it provides students with a broad based knowledge of various subjects which helps them become well rounded individuals it also teaches transferable skills that are essential for success in any career additionally general education courses are often required as part of a degree program which ensures that students have a strong foundation in the humanities social sciences and natural sciences and mathematics then solutions for problems in professional technical and general education in india some possible solutions to the problems in professional technical and general education in india are improved infrastructure providing better facilities and infrastructure in education institutions can improve the quality of education and make it more accessible to students from all sections of society then teacher training training and professional development programs for teachers can improve the quality of education and help them stay up to date with the latest teaching methods and technologies then curriculum reform reforming the curriculum to make it more relevant to the needs of students and the job market can help students acquire the skills they need to succeed in their career then collaboration with industry collaborating with industry to provide internships apprenticeships and job opportunities can help students gain practical experience and make them more employable use of technology using technology such as online learning platforms virtual classrooms and educational apps can improve the reach and quality of education and make it more accessible to students in remote areas funding and resource allocation ensuring adequate funding and resource allocation to educational institutions can help improve the quality of education and reduce the disparities cities and access to education between urban and rural areas emphasis on educational vocational education emphasis emphasizing vocational education and providing training in trades and skills that are in high demand can help students acquire the skills they need to succeed in the job market then encouraging entrepreneurship encouraging entrepreneurship and providing support for startups can help create job opportunities and promote economic growth promoting research and innovation promoting research and innovation in educational institutions can help improve the quality of education and make it more relevant to the needs of society overall a comprehensive approach is needed to address the problems in professional or technical and general education in india it includes requires collaboration between the government education institution industry and civil society to create a conductive environment for training and learning and development Value education. Value education is an important aspect of any education system and it refers to the inculcation of values and ethical principles in students. The concept of value education has been widely debated in India and several institutions and organizations have been established to promote and impart value education in the country. The governance, policy and administration of value education in India are carried out by various bodies such as the National Council for Educational Research and Training, the Central Board of Secondary Education and the National Institute of Open Schooling. Value education in India is primarily imparted through the school curriculum and the CBSC has made value education mandatory for all its affiliated colleges. The NCERT also have developed a national curriculum framework for school education which provides guidelines for the incorporation of value education in the school curriculum. Apart from the school curriculum, several institutions and organizations have established in India to promote value education. The Indian Council of 
Philosophical Research is one such institution that promotes the study of philosophy and its application in day-to-day -day life. The interactions between various institutions and organizations involved in the governance, polity and administration of higher education in India is also very important. The NCERT and CBC work closely with each other to develop and implement higher education programs in schools. The ICPR also works in collaboration with educational institutions to promote the study of philosophy mm. and its applications in various fields. The importance of higher education in India cannot be overstated. In a rapidly changing world, it is essential to imbibe ethical principles and values and students to help them become responsible citizens. Early education helps students develop a sense of social responsibility, empathy and respect for diversity. However, there are also some challenges in the governance policy and administration of early education in India. One of the major challenges is the lack of trained professionals in the field of early education. Another challenge is the lack of resources and infrastructure for the implementation of early education programs in India. To overcome these challenges, it is important to increase the training and development of professionals in the field of higher education. It is also essential to provide educated resources and infrastructure to schools for the implementation of value education programs. In conclusion, the governance, policy and administration of value education in India are carried out by various institutions and organizations. The interaction between these institutions are also important in promoting and imparting value education. While there are some challenges in the implementation of value education programs in schools, it is important to overcome them to ensure that students receive a well-rounded education that includes the inculcation of values and ethical principles too. Thank you for listening. So, with the help of this video, we have completed the paper one quick summary of NET. The paper one is common for both licensed students and also for other humanities or arts, whatever it may be, those students. So. With the help of this video, I have just completed the basic ideas, basic summary, a quick recap of all these topics. Thank you for listening.